Um, I do notice you have some black bands on your arms. Yes. And it's called katsu. And yes. Of, I, of course, I know it well. But um, um, before we get into how you use it, have you seen any effects on, on yourself? Yes. You know what happened? I used to have an old version of the katsu and it got stolen. Uh, and I was very, 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 very sad about that. Um, and you know, when was the last time I used my old katsu? When I did uh, um, the double Catalina. Oh, okay. And you should have seen how much, I, how fast I recovered. Yeah. Basically what it do to my arms, um, I don't use it frequently in my legs. I basically use my arms. They relax them a lot. Yeah. Um, they make my, you know, it's really, sometimes in the morning when you go into the pool, and you swam last day and you w went to work and you get into the pool. If I don't use katsu, my arms feel tired and it takes me a long time to warm up. Yeah. Since I started using katsu again, because I got this new one um, that week ago, um, I feel very relaxed. Great. My arms are very light. Yeah. It's, uh, it's feeling light. Yes. And I think this is something that uh, for anybody who's serious about open water swimming, this is a must um, because your recoveries are going to be um, better. And the other thing that I've, I, I've noticed is that I sleep very well. But not only do I sleep very well, but I sleep soundly very well. Yeah. So I have this thing called whoop yeah. and it tells me every day, every night, how, how, how well I slept. And usually during the week, I only get maybe one yellow. And if I'm lucky, 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 one green this week um out of seven days i've had three greens and three yellows wow so that's that's the effect yeah um, and, and i haven't been sleeping much more than i usually sleep yeah so it's a it's a great um it's a great device um yeah you know it it, it, it might be interesting that you tell people the First, how you discovered, uh, how was Katsu discovered? Because I, I always think about that and, and, and the effects that you know, you know more than I, I said. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, it was invented in Japan by a Japanese doctor. And I was coaching uh, the USA um, open water team back in the 2001 World Championships. And uh, it was there that I learned about this Japanese technology. And uh, I immediately, um, you know, took a liking to it. I understood it. And I, I went to the inventor, this Japanese doctor, and I said, I don't understand why, like, the rest of the world doesn't have this technology. And he said, oh, there's two reasons. First reason is I don't speak English. And I was speaking to him in Japanese. So the second reason is I never travel outside of Japan. Okay. I said, oh, I speak English and I travel outside of Japan. And I said, could you teach me what you're doing? And he said, sure. Um, and I said, do you, do you have a book or something I could read to prepare? And he says, no, it's all in my head. <laughs> oh, no. And so I said, OK, well, I will come back to Japan and um, I would love for you to teach me. And, and he was very kind. He says, yes. You know, I know you're going to travel all the way from California to Tokyo, and and I'll be very happy to teach you. So, a few months went by. I went back to Japan, and and he started to teach me. But of course, I had to return back home, and then that continued for 13 years. 13 wow. years. So, so I would. Would you were you were you were you were being taught. Like that to do it like a sushi. That to yes. do one sushi, it takes you know years and years to learn the sushi. Yes, yeah. So, every, I would go back to Japan four to six times a year. I would visit Dr. Sato, the inventor, and gradually he would teach me everything, everything, everything. We we did everything. He taught me how to use it on professional athletes, on Olympians on old people, on people who were comatose, on car accident victims, on people who had cerebral palsy and multiple sclerosis. And finally, after 13 years, he never told me when my training was over, <laughs> never. <laughs> so I never knew how much more or how much 
training I need to go. I just knew that everything he was teaching me was very, very valuable. And finally, um, in um, of, of January of 2014, so I met him in 2001. And then in 2014, January, he said, okay, you, you know, you can, let's introduce this to the world. And by that time, after 13 years, I had been in a hospital with him and I, you know, I'd, I'd been taught all about anatomy and physiology. And, and finally, when he said, oh, you're ready, suddenly I got nervous. So up <laughs> until that time, I was, I said, when is this gonna be over? When is this gonna be over? But in the Japanese culture, you never ask your sensei, you know, something, he just tells you. So I was okay. waiting, waiting and waiting. And then he says, okay, you're ready. You, you know enough. Then I got nervous. And then he, I think he saw my nervousness. He says, it's okay. You, you should be comfortable in your knowledge. And, um, and so here we are now. And yes. um, I, I, you know, what I like about this, initially my first reaction when he, when he showed me this technology was not for myself. It was not for business. It was actually for my parents. When I saw him working with all the older people, not athletes, just regular old people, and he told me, we, we want to introduce this um, to the older population. And I said, oh, great. So that was my interest. And when I see it, especially for extreme athletes like yourself, who are, let's say, over 50 years old, I can't think of anything better than this. It's, it's so good. And, and what you just said about this first week of your use is, is what most, most extreme athletes um, say. I mean, it is, you guys are all going to work hard. Working hard is not a problem. It's the recovery that's important. And especially if you lead, uh, lead a life like the one I do, I mean. Busy. Yeah, busy. Now with, with uh, you know, being in the house with COVID, it's a little bit lighter, but just think that, you know, the same thing happens to you. We travel three or four days out of the week and we're on airplanes and airports and getting up and down and getting up in the morning early, yeah. early to be able to go to swim before you have the first meeting and stuff like that. So, um, no, I'm very happy, Stephen. Yeah. It's, a, it's a pleasure that uh, you introduced me to Katsu. Yeah, well, that's good because the fast, the better you can recover, the better your next workout will be. <laughs> exactly. Totally. And, and, and your workouts, I mean, Rafa isn't easy on you. <laughs> no, he's not. He's not. He, he, you know, he, he pushes me. Yeah. And, uh, and, but I enjoy it. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I, 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 always, I always ask myself the question, why are some people that go to the pool and they complain to the coach whatever they're doing? So, yeah. Or they go to the pool and they don't finish their workouts. You know, just, you know, why to waste so much time? Or the ones are in the pool... You know, talking all the time, oh, I, I, I hate that. I mean, people think that I'm very unsociable, but when you go to the pool, it's like, you know, you're, a, you're in workout, it's not a social event. I mean, you don't go and gossip and, and they want to ask questions and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm not very friendly in the pool. <laughs> no, you're focused. <laughs> yeah, I'm very focused. I have to focus. 